On the 18th of October 2006, a woman was bound and thrown into a car. She was driven into a forest outside Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. She was shot twice in the head. Her body was then blown into pieces with C4 explosives. C4 explosives are explosives meant to bring down buildings, not to kill people. The victim was Alton Tuya Sheribu, a Mongolian national. Alton Tuya was a victim of Malaysia's politics due to her involvement with a high-ranking politician. Alton Tuya's cousin reported her disappearance to the police and sought help from the Mongolian embassy in Bangkok. Following police investigations, Malaysian police would find bone fragments in a forest. DNA tests would later confirm that these were remains of Alton Tuya. I saw the actual crime scene. It looked like there'd been a war. A bomb site. So, who were her killers? 30-year-old Chief Inspector Azila Hadri and 35-year-old Corporal Sairu Azar Umar. Both were members of the Malaysian Police Special Actions Unit, UTK, and bodyguards of the Malaysian Prime Minister. Why would the Prime Minister's bodyguards kill a 28-year-old Mongolian model and translator? You see, Alton Tuya didn't know any of these men. Because these two officers who have been found guilty beyond reasonable doubt now, didn't even know her. Alton Tuya attended modeling school in France, but worked as a translator as she was fluent in Mongolian, Russian, Chinese, English, as well as French. She often traveled out of Mongolia to countries like China, Singapore, and Malaysia. Alton Tuya was married twice, but both marriages ended in a divorce. Her child was sent to live with her parents. In 2006, Elton Tuya told her parents that she was going to Malaysia. I asked her, why are you going there? Do you have any particular work there? Do you know anyone there? She said, I've met this big boss there. By big boss, we Mongolians mean a person with great power. Alton Tuya was in a romantic relationship with Abdul Razak Baginda, an advisor to former Prime Minister Najib Razak, despite him being married at the time. She accompanied him to Paris as his translator during his negotiation to purchase the French Scorpion-class submarines for the Malaysian government. Then, things took a turn when their relationship soured. She started harassing and blackmailing Baginda, demanding $500,000 for her silence regarding the submarine deal. More on the controversial submarine deal later. This corruption scandal surrounds the purchase of two French Scorpion submarines, the shocking and brutal murder of a glamorous Mongolian woman. Baginda was desperate to get rid of her, so he went to the Prime Minister's security chief, Musa Safri, who introduced him to Chief Inspector Azila Hadri. On the day before her murder, Alton Tuya had filed a police report. I'm just a normal girl trying to meet my lover who lied to me, who promised many things but now wants to put me in jail or kill me. Maybe it's my fault to blackmail him, but I have my own problems because of his lies. If something happened to me, please check with this person. This person she was referring to was Abdul Razak Baginda. That night, she visited her ex-lover at his home. That's when she was taken by the two bodyguards in a car and never to be seen again. Three people were arrested by the Malaysian police, the two bodyguards and Baginda. During the trial, a private investigator hired by Baginda to protect his family against Alton Tuya would reveal that Alton Tuya also had an affair with Najib Razak and that it was Najib who introduced her to Baginda at a diamond exhibition in Singapore. Najib was quick to deny knowing the woman. I never, never met her at all. The following day, private investigator Bala would sign a form saying he didn't mean what he said about the Prime Minister and that he said it under duress. Then, he vanished. More than two years later, Bala's lawyer would find out from him that he was in Kashmir. 
When Bala met his lawyer in Singapore, he would confirm that his allegations regarding the Prime Minister and Alton Tuya were true. It turns out that he was intimidated by the Malaysian army. Army intelligence was waiting in front of my house, he said. They're already watching your house, he said. And the Malay man asked me whether you are married, I said yes. Do you love your family? I said yes. If you love your family, just follow instruction, just follow him. Like, why do I get an energy to rest the people who just told me? But I'm the number one, my love, and the Bala and his family were escorted out of the country. In 2013, Bala returned to Malaysia wanting to expose the truth, but he would die of a heart attack within two weeks. Coincidence? When Al Jazeera journalist Marianne was covering this sensitive story, she was deported by Malaysian authorities. I'm being deported from Malaysia. I'm being escorted by um, about five customs agents and a man in military outfit. Baginda would insist that he and Najib were innocent. Datuk Najib had never met the deceased. How do I know? <laughs> It's like asking me, you know, you know, I mean, uh, I know, okay, I know. He stated that Al Tentuya was never involved in a submarine deal. The deal, the purported deal was signed in June 2002. I first met the deceased November or December 2004. That's almost, almost a two year lapsed. So I just failed to see the connection. According to French investigation, Alton Tuya was in Paris with the two men. You see, during negotiations, the French company had paid 114 million euros to companies owned by Baginda, Najib and other Malaysian politicians. She had a lot of information with her and she was threatening to to tell all if she didn't get her portion of the money. Najib maintained his innocence, insisting those were all lies. The case dragged on for years until finally in 2015, both officers were sentenced to death for the murder of Elton Tuya. Azila Hadri would then claim that Najib had ordered the kill. Once again, Najib would deny his involvement. The other bodyguard, Sairu Azza Uma, has fled to Australia. He was subsequently detained by Australian authorities following an Interpol raid notice. Former Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir urged Australia to offer Sairu political asylum so that he may speak the truth regarding Alton Tuya's murder. Uh, he's frightened of coming back here. If he thinks he is safe in Australia, I think he would be able to say uh, who instructed him. If I can help him get uh, uh, asylum in Australia because of his fear of something happening to him if he comes back, I would try. Sairu also claims he was acting under orders. His text messages revealed that he was making a deal with someone. He demanded a total of $17 million and that he won't bring down the Prime Minister. Sairu would later publish a video in detention saying that Najib was innocent. According to Sairu's Australian relative, Sairu confessed that three people were at the crime scene the two bodyguards, and Abdul Razak Baginda. I said, did you pull the trigger? Like, did you? He said, no, I didn't pull the trigger. Razak pulled the trigger. This murder case isn't the only accusation faced by former Prime Minister Najib Razak. When Najib was accused of funneling 700 million US dollars from Malaysia's wealth fund into his personal bank account, 
he claimed that this was a gift from Saudi Arabia. Nobody gives that amount of money to anybody, not even Bill Gates. Alton Tuya was caught in the middle of Malaysia's political corruption. And till today, she has yet to receive the justice she deserves. No, nothing happened. The, the case is finished. finished. The case has come to an end. The cases that went in court, went through the police, has not implicated Datuk Sri Najib or even DSP Musa or Razak Baginda has not implicated them at all. My daughter did nothing bad to this country. Maybe she made someone furious or mad, but she wasn't a terrorist. She didn't kill anybody. She didn't illegally cross borders. There must be a huge amount of money, power, and possibly crucial operations behind this. We are dealing with corruption at the highest level.